In this Edexcel macro video, let's spend a few minutes thinking about a key macro concept, GDP per capita. Well, per capita GDP measures the average value of economic output per person in a country. GDP, of course, is the total value of goods and services produced within a nation. And GDP per capita is a useful metric for understanding the average standard of living or income level within a given nation. Per capita GDP is total GDP per year, for example, divided by population. Now, clearly, we need to have both accurate measures of GDP and also uh, an accurate guide to the size of a country's resident population, which for most countries revolves around using an occasional census. These are the countries in 2022 with the largest GDP per capita measured in dollars and adjusted for purchasing power parity. Luxembourg, uh, well out in top there, Norway, uh, Ireland came pretty high as well. Now, this very high level of income per capita in Ireland can be partly explained by the significant presence of a large number, a cluster of multinational businesses that hold assets, including based production in Ireland. The likes of Apple and Facebook, the pharmaceutical giant Pfizer and Google, among others, accounted for over half of the so-called total value added to the Irish economy in 2022. On the other scale, these are the countries in the world with the lowest per capita GDP in 2022. And uh, you can see that all of them had a per capita GDP of less than $1,000, according to the IMF's data. Burundi is one of the world's most impoverished countries, 87%. Nearly 90% of the population living below the World Bank's poverty measure of $2.10 per day. Vast reliance on farming, often subsistence farming with little surplus output. And you'll see there a youth unemployment rate of more than 65%. Extreme poverty in the world's poorest country. Here's a figure for GDP per capita in the UK. Uh, measured at constant prices. So therefore you can tell the data is in real terms. Uh, price changes have been uh, considered and the data is expressed at constant rather than current prices. And you can see ups and downs, but there's, the, for example, the global uh, financial crisis leading to a recession in 2009. Another fall, obviously a significant fall in the COVID pandemic when the level of GDP in the UK dropped by more than 10% in just one year before the recovery started. So that's income per capita in the UK. Of course, keep in mind that you can break this data down. You can disaggregate the numbers. So this chart is quite interesting. It's for 2021 and shows per capita GDP by region. And you can see that London is far and away the, the richest in that sense, richest region in the UK using this metric. Indeed, uh, the figure is 56,000. In London in 2021, only 23,000 in the northeast, uh, less than half, 41% in fact, of the figure for London. So national data for GDP, which we showed uh, there, that's the national data, can often hide regional variations. But critically, there can also be sub-regional differences. So the, the, the darker shaded areas here show GDP per capita higher than the national average. And it's, uh, there is obviously a north-south divide, but it's often more granular, more detailed than that. Indeed, if we look at London, there's GDP per capita in London. Again, the darker the shaded areas, the higher the per capita incomes. And again, you can see there is a significant, uh, if you like, a west-east split. Parts of East London significantly poorer than neighbouring boroughs and areas in Greater London. So when you get the GDP per capita data for a country... Keep in mind there will be significant variations at regional and sub-regional level. The economics of that is really quite interesting. So thanks for joining in this macro video.